Welcome back to Camper and to our amazing Simpson Desert special where we left you last with camels, which seems perfectly natural given their connection to the story and their role in the opening up of this country back in the 19th century. The great Cecil Madigan himself used 19 of these creatures to forge the very path that we're traversing today. Now Cecil was no slouch when it came to exploration. He was part of the Mawson expedition to Antarctica, so it's no surprise that in his later years he opted to thaw out a little in the desert. Clearly Cecil loved adventure, and so do we. So we've pushed north to the Madigan line, and uh, my initial thoughts are, um, well I guess it, it gets used far less, it's much more remote than say the French and for that reason uh, the track's in much better condition. We pick up Cecil's Camp 6 as our first stopping point on the Madigan Line. Now the Madigan expedition would cover on average 25 kilometres a day, at which point they would make camp. And we're on the Madigan line until we turn right on the Hay River Road at Camp 15. So that'll give you some indication of how much of this northern part of this pristine national park we're going to get to experience. After such a long journey to get here, and a good understanding of our absolute isolation, we're all feeling the sense of admiration and respect for what Madigan did all those years ago. So it's time for a group photo and a bit of quiet reflection. One, two, three, yeah! yeah! Nice. Michael Ellum shoots a lot of cars for ARB and an opportunity to capture these 70 and 200 series Toyotas in their natural environment is exactly why he's here. Yeah, we've got a couple of people hanging on to it so that it brings um, yeah. people's attention to it. Yeah. Back on the track, and we've noticed a track going west over one of the bigger, steeper dunes that we've seen so far. This becomes an opportunity for the boys to get competitive. Macy's Mr. Grey does the dune with ease, but some hesitation on top, wondering about the other side of the dune, sees him sink into the soft Red Simpson sand. It's recovery time at last, and Gary is first on the scene with assistance. Not that Mark and Fiona look too concerned. A little bit of work and we'll be out. I, I only got bogged because I didn't know whether there was a <laughs> straight drop off, otherwise I would have kept going. We had heaps of boogie. Credit where credit's due, he did make it further than any of the 79s. Luckily, we've got the new ARB Tread Pro. Let's get my go. Guys, stay much. Tread Pro's in. Let's give it a go. Yep. Tread Pros are a go. When the boys finish playing, it's time to continue our journey east. And as the sun starts to wane and throw shadows at the dunes, we start to think about an appropriate campsite for the night. We're aiming for Camp 9 as our overnight stopover. For me, this part of the trip is an absolute standout as we make our way across some of the largest dunes in the entire Simpson. It is truly spectacular. Camp 9 sits on a flat between two majestic dunes and we swiftly set up our camp waiting for the full moon to appear in the late afternoon afterglow.
As is custom, after dinner, we move to the Bush Television for contemplation and conversation about another great day in the desert and prepare for another day of adventure ahead, which you'll see in the next episode of Camper. If you'd like more information about the Simpson Desert and how to get your Forby Desert ready, head to your local ARB store.